Hello, Pierre. Hi, Don. How, How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. A fantastic background, I gotta say. Thank you. Yes, does it look familiar? Very familiar. Yeah. I kind of uh, like to have a background like that to make my uh, clients feel uh, at ease at home. Sometimes it's just funny and sometimes it's just like that. It's, I love it. I love that touch. Um, now, what you and I were doing right before this was um, you mentioned that you have a client who has a Mandarin farm in Jeju. Yeah. Would you like and to what, see that? So what do you do? You, you turn that back screen into? I'll just, uh, just have to get that image here. And this is what happens. So, That's so good. I can go from one back up to another. And I like that because, uh, for instance, if a client says, oh, I've been to Italy, uh, we can use that backdrop. That's the forum in Rome or a map of Italy. So That's we can have some fun with this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I can see some, uh, some actual applications with this, uh, you know, for discussion and that sort of thing. Has that taken you into some conversations? Like, is this a good conversation starter? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so my client who has a Mandarin farm, uh, he, he didn't expect this, you know, so we came on, started the session, he could see the Mandarin and says, oh, that in Jeju? I said, yeah, it's in Jeju. It's a, you know, you, there's so many resources on the web now that you can easily find. Uh, so, yeah. That's so good. I, yeah. I think the coaches that are watching this, the light bulbs are going off in their heads right now. <laughs> you know, I still have good. to figure out all the potential I, I can get from this though. So mm. we'll see. Okay. Well, that's a great idea. And um, Pierre, why don't we introduce you to the world? Um, Okay. Uh, as that you know, less nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the world meaning our group of coaches, clients watching in. Um, but as you know, the purpose of this call is to is for us to really talk about your experience here, Dolly and Company, the great things that you're doing with your clients, and the ideas and just the great things that we share together could be applied and used with our coaches um, that are watching this, right? So that, that's the type of uh, mindset I want us to have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate that because, uh, um, you know, as you say, we're, uh, before we started doing that, uh, I felt more like uh, doing my thing, and, you know, my point of the world, but we've got people all over the place and uh, they've got fantastic experiences. Some of these coaches are, you know, really top notch. And uh, to hear from them is a great uh, learning opportunity for me. And uh, being a coach is learning. It's not teaching. It's not a, you're not a teacher per se. You're, you're um, a learner, a co-learner with your clients. And so I appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate yeah. you taking your time to speak with me today. So um, Pierre, floor is yours. Where are you from? What do you do? The whole thing. Well, it all started on a breezy October day many years <laughs> ago. No, just kidding. Uh, I'm from Ottawa. I, I live uh, still in Ottawa, Canada, which, of course, is the capital of our beautiful country. Um, as you know, Don, being Canadian uh, yourself, um, oh, yeah. this is a bilingual country. It's an officially bilingual country, which has two official languages, uh, English and French. And Ottawa is right on the border between the French uh, majority speaking province and the rest of Canada, which is uh, majority English speaking. So uh, Ottawa is officially in Ontario, Canada, which is an English speaking province. And I live just across the river in the province of Quebec, which is majority French speaking. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was born here. I grew up here. Uh, so for me, uh, having two official languages as a native speaker is just normal and natural. I grew up with English just as much as I grew up with French. So I'm very comfortable with it. And uh, one thing I always tell my clients is uh, I, I'm interested in foreign language learning. So I, I learned uh, Spanish. I speak Spanish fluently, uh, speak a bit of German. Um, I also studied Arabic. 
and mm -hmm. I will soon start to uh, study Korean. So, uh, yeah. And, and the reason I mentioned that is not to boast. The reason I mentioned that is that I, I, because of that, I understand what it feels like to learn a foreign language, uh, how challenging it is, how difficult, how um, really uh, frustrating it can be. And I feel that with my clients, uh, frustrating because you've got all these concepts in your mind that you don't have the language to express. And that's what the, most of my clients feel, I think, is the frustration of, I'd like to be able to say more, I'd like to be able to express my ideas, to articulate my thoughts, but I, I just don't have the language to do it. You know? So you're underperforming in terms of your cognitive and social abilities um, and your specialization and expertise, you're underperforming. And um, there's a disconnect between your capacity in, in, in all, you know, thoughts and, and concepts and your capacity to express it. So um, that makes it somewhat like you're becoming a child again. Mm. It's even all kind of humiliating because you're mm. trying to talk with a foreigner or um, a business partner, a colleague, and you're just not at the level where you can actually perform intellectually. So there's, for me, learning a foreign language is a lot about overcoming those feelings of uh, fear, anxiety, mm -hmm. feelings of uh, incompetence, feelings of I won't make it, feelings mm -hmm. of I'll look foolish, I'll look incapable, I'll look incompetent. Those are the worst things you for a foreign language learner, Don, is feeling that uh, because I can't perform at the level I can in my native language, then I'm not doing well. Mm. Um, and that stops people cold in their tracks. Absolutely. Can I agree with you more? Yeah. Um, not even for language learning, for, for any um, you know, skill or any function that you're, you're performing at, if you have if you have like, let's say the performance on the Y axis and, and, and you got the stress on the, the X, um, as you go higher up the performance, um, you know, it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reach an inflection point where the higher the stress, your performance actually drops, right? So yeah. I'll actually mention this in my previous call, but we want to get our students at that inflection point where it's like, uh, there's you give them a little bit of stress, right? It can't it can't be too relaxed because then that means you know you're you're at a very low point of performance. But if you get them at the right point, which as a coach that that is your skill, right? That is your responsibility. Um, you're gonna have your student performing at the peak. But what tends to happen is um, our, our students they're in a job environment where they have to speak the English at the highest level. Their job depends on it. And they do freeze, right? Because it's just too much stress. It often paralyzes you. And if that becomes a habit, if that happens every day for years, then you've built this, literally, you've built a wall for, for, for the English language that is so exactly. high, right? Exactly. So what you're saying, Pierre, is that what you're doing with your clients is, um, you are getting them comfortable, right? You're letting them know. You're taking away all those externalities of, of, of being fearful, anxiety, looking foolish. Is that correct? Exactly. I think that's the, the first thing you have to do as a, a foreign language coach. Yeah. Uh, you have to develop that rapport with the client, uh, a, a sense of trust, a relationship of trust where they can make errors and they won't be called out on it all the time because yep. uh, that's not helpful in terms of learning. Um, mm. And you're not, and the other thing is you're not in a hierarchical relationship. Now this is an important point because, you know, uh, depending on which educational system you grew up in, um, your vision of what learning is and what teaching is varies greatly. So if you were raised in a very hierarchical, top-down system, 
where the teacher is basically the master in the class and you're the, uh, the passive learner student, um, the coaching relationship um, might seem strange to you because yes. you may expect instruction, you may expect teaching. Hmm. And that's not what we do. We, we, we put ourselves at the same level as the learner um, in terms of what, what road are we going to travel together here? Mm. I'm, not, I'm not the fountain of knowledge. I'm a guide that will help you find your own learning, your own uh, way of learning foreign language. I'll give you, I'll suggest some tools. I'll give you indications. I'll support you. I'll, I'll be with you on that journey, but I'm not going to say, this is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. It's, it's, it's not like that. And if the client expects that, and sometimes I feel they do, mm. uh, I have to clarify that because uh, look, you've, you've spent how many years in a system where you're told, sit down, listen, and do what you're told. Mm. And all of a sudden that's, that's not going to cut it, Don, in terms of becoming a good foreign language speaker in a business environment. You can't be passive. You can't wait for other people to decide how you're going to learn. You have to, to empower yourself and own your own foreign language learning. Right? You're an adult now and you can do that. And you've got all you need is the tools. Yes. That's the role of the coach to empower the client to do that. So then, Pierre, um, how do you bridge that gap? you know, where you're, you're meeting your clients for the first time and they are used to that top-down approach, right? Being told what to do, especially in a classroom or teaching environment. Um, what, do you, what have you done that war has worked uh, in, in bridging that gap quickly, right? So that you guys form a partnership and it's a together road as opposed to that one-way road of telling them what to do, right? That's not what we do here. So what did you do? Well, first of all, I explained that that's my approach. Okay. Uh, I try to make it clear. Sometimes it just clicks and it's obvious. Sometimes In the first class? In the first meeting. Okay. Yeah. I, I approached that, that topic in the first meeting in the sense that, well, this is my style. Um, what are your expectations? What are your goals? How do you intend to get there? We have this discussion at the very, very first meeting. Mm -hmm. And I try to size up what my client feels is the coaching relationship they want to have with me. Right. Uh, and I have to make sure at the very first meeting, if possible, that uh, I can determine if uh, we're on the right track. If I, you know, I want to know, am I the right coach for this person or not? Maybe I'm not. Maybe their expectations are completely different from what I can offer. And I want to know that. So I, I, I put it on the table. I say who I am, what my background is, uh, what, uh, uh, how I work. And I, I, of course, it's mostly about the client. I want to know as much as possible about the client uh, in that first meeting. And, uh, but sometimes it's not clear right off the bat. And, uh, I have to clarify it over a certain number of sessions because if you, if it's ingrained, that's the way you think about learning and teaching. Uh, it's, you can't just change that overnight. Mm. And it's a, you have to develop a relationship of trust yep. as a coach and client. So that's the number one thing. Once you've developed that relationship, uh, then it's easier to clarify these things over time. But it, depending on the client, it can be immediate or it can take some time. Well, I, you know, <clears throat> trust has been the core topic for, for all of the calls that I've had with my coaches. It's, it's the baseline, right? It, yeah. And from that trust, you can do beautiful things together. What happens, though, when you have a student that is so passive, right? And, and you know that, that it's going to take much longer in getting that student aligned with you know, what you have in store for them, uh, which is, of course, forming that partnership, that equal ground. What are you, what are you doing when you see a client and, and, it's, and they're extremely passive? So what have you, what have you done? Well, I, I've been using the Smart Goals worksheet that you uh, created. Uh, I found it very useful in the sense that um, 
it gets the person centered on what they want, mm. not what I want. What, what I want doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So what do you want? What are your goals? How are you going to attain them? What, where do you see yourself in five years, you know, 10 years, uh, three, five years? Um, for those uh, new, sorry to cut you off there, Pierre, for the new coaches and for the people that don't know what a smart goals worksheet, could you mm -hmm. explain what that is? Well, it's basically um, a document that is available for us coaches and clients that we use to get people to clarify what their goals are and to determine how they want to get there and eventually mm -hmm. leads to a, 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 a plan of action. Mm -hmm. So smart goals and smart goals, of course, are specific, measured, attainable, um, realistic and time bound goals where you are concretely, specifically deciding what you want to do in a weekly plan that you can develop. So it, the smart goals worksheet leads to that minimal viable plan uh, and that's another form we use to help people determine uh, concretely what they want to do. So to come back to your question is the SMART goals worksheet helps the client to center, uh, to target what they want, what's important for them, and to make it clear with both the coach and themselves uh, where they want to go. So that, that clarifies the motivation. And yes. motivation is very important in foreign, foreign language learning because it's tough. It's really tough. It takes work. It takes discipline. It takes motivation to do it uh, because you don't just want to sit through two hours of coaching every week and not progress. Right. You, you want to be able to, to show something for it. And to do that, it takes work and discipline. And one of the things I tell my clients is two hours a week is good. It's very good, mm. but it's not enough you won't become proficient in the foreign language with two hours of work every week. So what are you going to do while, when we're not together? Yes. What do you want to do? Do you want to watch, for instance, one of the things I suggest is watching Netflix mm -hmm. uh, or some other service that has English subtitles. So if, if it's too difficult, then watch it in English with Korean subtitles, right? Then watch it again in English with English subtitles and then watch it a third time without subtitles and see if you understand better the third time. You can start not reading, but just getting the gist from listening. Right. Well, that's one of the things, right? Uh, podcasts, uh, there's some amazing podcasts that are available that are free. Mm -hmm. um, looking at websites like uh, CNN or mm -hmm. BBC. And uh, let's look at articles. Let's look at current events. Um, and, and also what interests you, what, what, what is your, uh, what topics are you passionate about? And yeah. let's talk about that. There's no yeah. sense in talking about a business topic that doesn't interest you. So right. let's talk about things you, where your, your heart is. And, uh, I think that helps a lot. So for someone who's passive, why would they be passive to come back to your question? Why would they be passive if it's something they're passionate about? Well, I want to talk about that. 100%. I mean, um, you know, they, they are proactive in that they, 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 they see that they need to have a change. So they come to us and they become our clients and we pair them up with a fantastic coach, put them in a, you know, proven system that's going to help them get to their goals. Um, but in terms of mindset, you know, it's, it's a bit different because I studied abroad. I, I, you know, I studied at University of Washington and I had my final semester at Seoul National University. And I was quite shocked, you know, at the, the difference in terms of interaction with the professor and the students, right? So it's really the mindset. And, I, and I'm wondering if you have students that come to your class, right? Or come to you um, and just waiting for your lead, right? Um, what, what do you do in terms of shifting that mindset to getting them to open up more, getting them to, you know, uh, open up the discussion, having them offer you suggestions on maybe how or what materials to use or having them giving you direct feedback on certain plans that you've done with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, there's a risk involved in this, um, so I've been working as a teacher in the province of Ontario in Canada for, uh, well, I won't say how many years, 
it'll just make me seem older than I am. But um, the, the, the way this, the educational system has evolved in Ontario uh, and, and probably most of Canada is that the teacher is no longer the master in the classroom. It's a, he's a co-creator of learning uh, guide and uh, this, the student uh, is not a passive learner who just crams information. And so that's my background. That's, that's what I, I learned to do as a teacher uh, back then. So you really have to develop a relationship where the person understands that. And so you have to deconstruct, you know, somewhat what their image of uh, a guide is. And mm -hmm. uh, in, in most cases it goes well done. It's, it doesn't take much time. Sometimes it's a little bit harder and it takes more time. And, and actually the person may feel very uncomfortable that they're not being directed. So mm. sometimes people like a more directive coaching style yes. and that's fine. And, and if the client is really ill at ease with my uh, less directive coaching style, then um, there's a decision to be made. Do you want to continue with, with Pierre as a coach or do you prefer another coach? Which is fine because the matching has to be the right one. Yes. Um, but I won't change my coaching style in terms of be becoming directive. It's just not who I am. It's not what I believe in as a coach. I don't think it's a, it's the work, the best way to do it. I'm not saying it's the worst, but it's not the best way to do it. And I prefer being non-directive, but again, it comes to the, the relationship of trust. Um, it's like being a little bit over a cliff and I'm holding you from, uh, in, in the back of your shirt from falling off the cliff. Do you trust me or not, right? Yeah. So if you feel that the, the coach has to be directive, has to tell you what to do, um, then uh, I think we have to re-examine what the coaching relationship is. Then, then let's get into that relationship. Well, where, what would be some instances where we do have to be, uh, you know, give direction? Um, and on the, on the other side of the token, what, what would be an instance where you'd want the student to take the lead and have them show, um, have them be proactive? Can you give me some examples? Well, uh, giving direction and being directive are two different things. So okay. I don't think being directive as a general approach is, mm -hmm. is good personally. That's mm -hmm. not my, it's not one of my, um, it's not my coaching style is the one I've adopted, but sometimes giving direction may be helpful in terms of, okay, uh, for instance, your plurals, are you, are you, um, are you using a plural form correctly? So I need to point that out and I need to suggest resources. Um, so that's being directive or giving direction, I should say. Um, but it's not a directive coaching style. Uh, what I really like to do is to get people to talk about what their passions and interests are and look at that in terms of, can we talk about that? And can we articulate ideas and concepts around something that really interests you? And then, uh, you know, I can suggest vocabulary. Like, I always have fun with this. I've got these uh, index cards, a uh, pack of index cards. So this is the ancestor of Anki, right? Love so it. I like to show that, um, right? And you just keep adding new words, reviewing them often. Okay. It's the Anki concept, right? But it's the concept. more primitive version. Hey, you know? look. If yeah. it wasn't for the digital world that we're living in now, um, I would go back to writing in my diary or having everything in pencil and paper. You know, it just, it, 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 it you know, it's stored better, I think. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's um, research so think, that shows that. Right. Yeah. Um, it's writing it, 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 it teaches your brain in a different way. So, yeah. Um. But I, I like that method, and, and, I'm, and as you know, I'm a huge fan of Anki and flashcards and spatial repetition and that whole, those whole, you know, the whole nine yards with all that. But I digressed. You know, um, we were talking about right before the uh, flashcard. Well, we're talking about coaching style. We're talking about uh, you know, I've got a little document to share with you. If I can share my screen, Don, you want me to share mm -hmm. my screen? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, I, I wrote up a little document about my coaching uh, values and style and purpose. So 
these are my values. Uh, I've, I've identified three integrity in my relations with clients, mm. respect of my clients as learners and discoverers of a language, honoring my clients intellect experience and expertise. So even though you may be very low in your English skills, it has no bearing on your intellect experience and expertise, and you have to be treated as such. Um, my, my leadership style, my coaching leadership style is really as a participative co-creator of learning and as a guide. And my purpose is to provide the opportunity for my clients to develop their potential as English speaking learners so that it may have a positive impact on their careers, their professional lives, and even their personal lives. Mm -hmm. So keeping all of this in mind and being congruent in expressing this in how I deal with my clients, um, they should have a good idea of what that document says just from working with me, right? So I think that's I, important. I think that's a great golden nugget that our coaches can take away. Is, is, is that something that you share with your clients or is that just for you? It's just for me, but maybe I should share it with my clients. But I think if what I do reflects that document, that's what matters, you know, uh, saying I do this and not, and, and not doing it has no value, of course, but of course. doing it, living that. Uh, and I hope I always do. Uh, of my clients could, could say, okay, that's what he does. Hopefully. Uh, then that matters to me. Yeah. Well, it, it certainly rings true because uh, you have a great track record. You've got, I think just a lot of clients right now that, mm -hmm. and, and um, from what I know, um, because I check in with my clients and see how they're doing with their coaches. They all had just great things to say. Um, one of your clients who is leading a, a startup, not a startup, it's actually, it's grown quite a, it's grown quite a bit here in Korea. Um, you know, he has been with us for a while and he's extremely busy, but then, you know, I, I checked in with, I checked in with him because he just got linked up with you. Right. And, he said of all the coaches that he's had so far, you're the best one. Wow. That's, that's quite something. I appreciate knowing that. I appreciate it. So that. you're doing something, well, you're doing something right. And I wanted to share in this short time that we had what your operation, how you're thinking about things, how you're handling our clients, just your mindset, I think is something that can be greatly impactful for our coaches to take away from, from, from this Call that we had today just your mindset of 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 your your co-creation um you know establishing that trust you know applying the smart goals worksheet the mvp a lot of the stuff that i'm preaching about here at Delmi and company you're actually taking and using with your clients which i love to hear um because certainly uh I don't want to be just talking and, and have it go through one year and out the other for, for our coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's your leadership, Don. It's, uh, it's, it, it's important that we work as a team. Yeah. Pierre, I can go on forever with you. Uh, there's so many things, so many more things I, I wanted to talk about, but we are pressed for time. You have to run for your class. So, I have a client in a few minutes. <laughs> yes, you do. I don't want you to be late for that. Um, we'll, we'll leave it right here. And I think in the short future, we'll get back together and we'll continue where we left off. But thank you so much for, you know, sparing your time here with me today. It was great to talk to you. It was a total pleasure, Don. Thank you.